Okay. Well, I'm Dr. Dave Bierman. I've been practicing medicine since 1968 when I graduated from the University of Washington. I've worked at just about every level of government, uh, the federal government. I was in charge of health services at San Diego State University. I was the director of a county health department. I was the medical director for 14 years of the oldest Medicaid managed care program in the country. And I've been involved in drug abuse treatment and prevention in one way, shape, or form uh, for over 40 years. Uh, I've been doing medical marijuana recommendations as part of a pain management practice since 2000. And during that time, I have really learned an awful lot. Uh, not that I didn't know quite a bit about the medicinal use of cannabis beforehand, but it turns out it pales by what I've learned since then. Uh, I taught courses at UCSB and UCSF and San Diego State on recreational drugs and the pharmacology of those drugs and the effects on, on people. I also taught a course at UCSB on the origins of American drug policy, which has practically nothing to do with uh, drugs and has an awful lot to do with demonization, discrimination, and commerce. And we can talk about that uh, later if you want. I retired as the deputy director of the oldest Medicaid managed care program in the country and was looking around for um, some other thing to do professionally. I was approached by Jack Herrera, who wrote the book The Emperor Wears No Clothes, regarding doing some medical marijuana assessments. And after talking to uh, Jack and after talking to a physician who was leaving the country and wanted to have somebody take over his practice, I felt that uh, it was worth a try to, to see whether I liked it uh, and to uh, see whether it was something that uh, I really felt comfortable doing. And I must say that this has been really the most rewarding part of my uh, medical career. Uh, particularly early on, people would come in still kind of sh shell-shocked from the 90 years of disinformation and outright propaganda that we've had uh, in regards to marijuana. Uh, it's really amazing to me that uh, great efforts have been made not to use the appropriate word cannabis and I still get upset when I see newspapers use the word pot. I have no idea uh, why they do that other than uh, to marginalize the fact that this is actually a medication and has uh, a, a lot of a lot of beneficial effects. So over the last 11 years I've treated over 1,500 patients. Uh, not everybody that calls up gets an appointment. Not everybody that gets an appointment gets a recommendation for the medicinal use of marijuana. Not everybody that makes an appointment is interested in the medicinal use of uh, cannabis. Uh, but many people are, and uh, it has benefited a, a whole range of medical conditions that have been truly amazing. And I've learned an awful lot about how the nervous system works. The endocannabinoid system, that is our own system uh, of receptors and neurotransmitters related to marijuana, is the largest neurotransmitter system in the brain. And yet, it was only characterized in 1992, and we really don't know that much about how it operates. But we do know that it influences a lot uh, of our human activity and that it appears to be important in modulating uh, the way the, the nervous system works. So. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Robert Melamy, PhD. I'm a professor at the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs. Um, I was the former chairman of the biology department there, and currently, in addition to my role as professor, I'm also CEO and president of Cannabis Science, a publicly traded company on the NASDAQ bulletin board, CBIS. I was studying free radicals in that I was studying radiation chemistry and DNA repair. So that gave me a foundation to understand free radicals as very important modulators, essentially of aging and age-related illnesses, uh, which is really what cannabis does. So by combining my understanding of life from the thermodynamic point of view, far from equilibrium thermodynamic point of view, in conjunction with uh, my expertise in radiation chemistry and free radicals and being a lifelong cannabis user, 
I've been in a very unique position to assemble those three entities into a cohesive perspective as to what life is and the fundamental role that the endocannabinoid system plays in life and how it modulates a, an imbalance that we all suffer. And people in general are aware that omega-3s are good for you and they inhibit uh, various cardiovascular problems. What most people are not aware of is that they're participatory directly in the endocannabinoid system in that they make a variety of our endocannabinoids and they're part of the uh, bigger picture of lipid metabolism of which endocannabinoid system is kind of a central focal point. So there are numerous benefits from these essential fatty acids that, um, are, that we can help modulate. We can change our biochemistry by our nutritional intake. But going beyond that, there's only certain limitations as to how much you can vary our endocannabinoid activity from that nutritional point of view. So that for many, many, many people with a whole huge spectrum of illnesses ranging from uh, cardiovascular disease, uh, skeletal disease like osteoporosis, uh, cognitive dysfunction from neurological deterioration associated with aging, and literally all the autoimmune diseases and many cancers, they all have free radicals as, a, uh, as part of their etiology. And cannabinoids, be, the, be they the ones we make or the ones we can take in, benefit those. So it's now my position that in order for us to reset our endocannabinoid activity thermostat to lower the damage caused by essentially uh, a degree of unnecessary inflammatory responses, uh, we have to essentially consume cannabis with cannabis being now, from my perspective, an essential nutrient by virtue of how it will turn down inflammatory responses and inhibit the aging process and the uh, negative consequences of age-related illnesses. Nobody dies from being old, they die from age-related illnesses. Very safe and effective medicine that's able to uniquely tap into our endocannabinoid system, which interestingly and ironically regulates everything in our body. So the next research that we did was to answer what I think is probably one of the more interesting questions, and that is, is there an interaction between cannabinoids and opioids uh, in pain relief? So we took a group of uh, patients who were taking a stable dose of either long-acting oxycodone or long-acting morphine, and we measured the level of the 12-hour release drug in their bloodstream before and then after five days of vaporizing cannabis three times a day. And what we found there was, interestingly, that the plasma levels of the opioids, either oxycodone or morphine, were actually decreased in the patients after exposure to the cannabis. But their pain relief was increased. So that's somewhat paradoxical, but my colleague, uh, who's a pharmacologist, says that what we're seeing then is a so-called pharma pharmacodynamic effect as opposed to a pharmacokinetic effect. If the cannabis had boosted the plasma levels of the opioids and led to decrease in pain, that would have been a pharmacokinetic effect. But instead, in, by some other mechanism, uh, the cannabinoids allowed for more pain relief at lower plasma levels. So what does this mean? I mean, it means that for people who have pain, who are on opioids, uh, they may be able to take lower dosages or the same dose for a longer period of time, and they may have actually decreased side effects because, as you know, opioid side effects include nausea, which cannabis can help, constipation. Many people think cannabis also helps constipation. For me, I think one of the, one of the tricky parts about this is that I'm aware that in some of the government hospitals, the VA hospitals, for example, or other military uh, facilities, uh, patients who are on chronic opioids have to have a negative urine cannabis test before they can get their drugs, and that seems a little short-sighted because people may actually be boosting the effect of their pain medicine by using uh, cannabinoids in conjunction.
I just want to preface it with saying that I feel very fortunate to be in Washington State where Senator Jeannie Cole Wells has done so much for cannabis patients. And, and a couple of years ago, new legislation enabled a broader variety of practitioners to recommend cannabis to patients, and one group was naturopathic physicians, which I was thrilled at because it's, it's a part of our herbal medicine that we have to offer to people anyway. And so I have seen a number of, of patients using cannabis and recommended to a number of patients. Um, I think there's such a huge range of quality of life improvements that they see. I'm Michelle Sexton and I'm a naturopathic doctor and clinical cannabis researcher. But I actually became fascinated with what is it in a plant that is medicine. And since I knew nothing of chemistry, I didn't know how to understand that. So basically I went and got the education. I was lucky to have a wonderful mentor, Dr. Ellen Pepley, at the University of uh, Texas Tech University in Lubbock, Texas. And she introduced me to phytochemicals. I was looking at quercetin content and onions for her. I got interested in native echinacea uh, to the West Texas Plains. I got interested in how do you analyze a plant and find out what's in it. So I just learned it. Started, did some of that at best year. Um, and then ended up in a research project that it was in the lab of Dr. Nephi Stella at the University of Washington, and he studied the endogenous cannabinoid signaling system. And so that's where I've been for six years, and soaking it up. <laughs> so kind of, that's where life has brought me. In treating people, I like to start on just the lowest level of intervention possible, which is often just asking them about diet and lifestyle. And, but what's really important is sleep. And it's just amazing to me how many people can't sleep, don't sleep well, don't get adequate sleep, are not rested, and it affects the whole endocrine system in a not positive fashion, really. Uh, it can affect weight gain, getting insufficient sleep, it affects your immune system, it affects their by stress in your body and how you handle stress during your day if you're not well rested. And so, as a matter of quality of life, people report that they can sleep really well and they feel better in general, therefore. They can get up and function better the next day. So I think that's an important um, quality of life improvement. I'm very interested in different strains of cannabis and one of the things that made me really interested is a, a study I've been doing at the University of Washington um, funded by the National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine. And so I'm, I was looking at the endogenous cannabinoid signaling system in, in patients with MS because we know that in the mouse model you can intervene in that system and, and almost totally prevent disease, shorten its course, lessen its severity. So we think that has strong implications for humans. And many patients report symptom relief in fact. Well, I, I think when you look at what are the pieces that will make me as healthy as I can be. So to me, adding CBD is really a beneficial piece. I mean, vitamins and minerals, we all sort of know, yes, we do that. A lot has to do with what we eat and when we eat and are we getting good probiotics. I mean, there's a lot of pieces to this. But I think CBD, because it potentially prevents so many problems, that adding that in a very small amount, you don't need a lot. You know, four, five, six milligrams a day can be enough as a preventative to really help. So you can get uh, topical products with this, creams, lotions, there's shampoos, conditioners, there's all kinds of applications that since you absorb it transdermally, you're going to get small amounts through that and we don't really get much of that in our normal diet so when you look at okay it's you know it's neuroprotective it's anti-inflammatory it modulates your immune system it protects your gut it protects your heart muscles it increases cell energy it helps you recover after exercise so for athletes it can be a big deal because it can increase your performance
and your body's capability to perform.